Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from WallStreetMojo.com. This is part 8 of our ratio analysis video series and in this installment we'll learn all about accounts receivables turnover ratio. In simple terms, account receivables turnover ratio indicates how effectively a business is collecting credit from its debtors. In this tutorial, we basically have four objectives. Number one, understand what account receivables turnover ratio mean. Number two, what is formula and the calculations? Number three is basically calculating account receivables turnover ratio for Colgate. Number four, what is interpretations? So before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder for you. We will be needing all the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so from the description link below. And also to keep yourself updated with the investment banking and core finance concepts, Please do subscribe to our channel, Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is account receivables turnover? Account receivables turnover is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the turnover ratios here. So if you look at this turnover ratios, it's divided into various parts like receivables turnover ratio, inventory turnover ratio and account payable turnover ratio. We'll discuss all of these one by one, but let's start with the basic. What are turnover ratios? Turnover ratios is something which uh, the, are the ratios that helps us analyze the assets of the company and how efficiently those assets are able to generate sales and finally cash. And uh, these turnover ratios, as I said, are divided primarily into three parts. The first one is what we will discuss right now. That's called as account receivable turnover ratio. Account receivables turnover ratio actually helps us in understanding how quickly you are able to convert your receivables. Receivables means the credit which you have given to the customer. So how soon you are able to convert your credit into cash. So basically it reflects the kind of a credit policy of the company and uh, how efficiently you do that is reflected by in this turnover ratio so we'll, we'll discuss this with the help of an example and i'll give you a basic example first and then we'll look at uh, the formula as well let's say if there is a company and uh, they've sold a product worth um, let's say dollar one thousand okay now when you sell a product you know there have there are two choices for the customers in most cases you know are you either the customer may pay full dollar 1000 worth cash right away and uh, there could be other set of customers who may want some credit from uh, this uh, buying process because they might not have enough cash as of now usually the companies deal with uh, cash and credit a combination of both so uh, let's assume that cash is dollar 200 in this case and uh, the company provides credit to its customers to an extent of let's say dollar 800 what do we get here this is cash sales and this is credit sales okay so let me put it this way credit sales this is dollar 800 if you have to account for it in the balance sheet how will you do that this credit sales which uh, you've done by selling product worth dollar 1000 this is nothing but accounts the receivables right because this is what you are expect to convert into cash going forward so it's a kind of an asset it comes under the current assets actually okay, so now that you have understood what are account receivables let's take a hypothetical example let's say in this case the credit sales is a uh, dollar eight thousand and receivables the accounts receivables is now let's say dollar sixteen hundred okay now credit sales and account receivables are kind of different right now and uh, if the company uh, was not collecting cash at all and only generating credit sales this account receivables would have been let's say dollar eight thousand right correct because whatever you have uh, given as credit and if the account receivables entry shows that same amount that means you haven't been in a position to collect cash from your customers right but let's say if this was 1600 what does this mean 1600 would mean that you have collected uh, the credit which you have given to the customers how frequently you have done that is is what is measured by account receivables and it's given by this ratio which says that it's a credit sales divided by accounts receivables okay here in this case this is 
8000 divided by 1600 that is 5 so what does that 5 mean 5 basically means that the company has collected you know 5 times this much of receivables in order to generate credit sales of 8000 so 5 times if you have to convert this in terms of uh, days let's say in a year there is 365 days so uh, what we can say here is that the company is collecting 1600 worth account receivables every 73 days okay so the company is collecting dollar 1600 worth of receivables every 73 days and that is account receivables turnover of five times so now that you have understood the formula let's move on and uh, do a quick example so here we have uh, some data let's assume that credit sales was 100,000 and returns were 20,000 so what will be your net credit sales net credit sales will be 100,000 minus the 20,000 of returns that is 80,000 net credit sales is 80,000 we have uh, the receivables data as well so receivables at the start of the year and at the end of the year so what will be the average receivables the average receivables will be this plus this divided by 2 or you can use the average function so here we get the average as uh, 40,000 okay so this is the average receivables the total turnover account receivables turnover This is equal to 80,000 divided by 40,000 that comes out to be 2. So now that we understand how to calculate the account receivables turnover ratio in a simplified way, let's look at the actual formula. The actual formula is something like this. Account receivables is equal to account receivables turnover is equal to net credit sales divided by average account receivables. So what's the difference here? The keyword net has been added. And here the keyword average is added to account receivables. You know, I'll explain you both uh, the what's the difference between the two. So net credit sales is nothing but credit sales minus the returns or the refunds. So that's how you calculate the net credit sales. So during the year, whatever products you have sold, some may be returned or refunded. So you need to subtract that as well from the credit sales. Okay. So that will give you net credit sales. Average accounts receivables is nothing but the accounts receivables at the start of the year. Okay. And uh, you add the account receivables at the end of the year and you divide the whole by two. So uh, this will give you the account receivables average. So a uh, quick question, why would you like to do an average of account receivables? Why not the end? You remember in this case in the first example we did this we uh, we took the account receivables as a at the end of the year but uh, the actual formula says that we should be using the average of it okay why is that so look at uh, uh, think of it you know the, look at the numerator the numerator is what it denotes has happened during the year right the full year say for example from 1st of january to the end of uh, december Okay, so during the year, but what about account receivables? You get a balance sheet which is as of you know first of January, that's the start of the year, and then you get another balance sheet which is at the end of the year, okay, which uh, is at the end, right? So that's thirty first of December. So you get two different snapshots, but uh, credit sales gives us the whole that has happened during the year. It is always wise to not just consider the start or the end. It's better to smoothen this out and average it so that you calculate the you know right amount so now that you have understood the calculation of uh, account receivables turnover i want you to actually pause for a moment and think about this turnover ratio and tell me whether this is good or bad okay now how do you define good or bad whether the company is doing good on the basis of account receivables turnover or bad how do you find it out right so if you if you look at this account receivables turnover of 2.0 what this essentially means is that the company is collecting cash every 182.5 days so company is able to convert its account receivables into cash every 182.5 days but whether it is good enough or not we really don't know right so in order to get the answer for whether this is good or bad we need to actually compare this with the industry okay 
So it's important to compare your company at hand with the overall peer group. Let's say if the peer group has account receivables turnover of uh, four. So how many days do you think it might take to collect its account receivables? So this would be equal to 365 divided by four, right? Every 91.25 days, the industry on an average is able to collect its account receivables. Okay, so on one side we have the industry that takes 91.25 days and on the other side we have a company which takes 182.5 days. So which is a good situation? Obviously the industry is doing much better. So this would be a bad situation to be in. So this company needs to improve upon its credit policy and work with its customers to follow up and do more things related to converting receivables into cash. Okay, so that's one part. Let's say if the industry as a whole had um, account receivables of let's say one point turnover of 1.5. If it was 1.5, it would have taken 243.3 days or more to you know convert receivables into cash. If we have this as now a peer group, as compared to that, the company is collecting cash every 182.5 days, right? So let us now calculate the account receivables turnover ratio for Colgate. So for that, I want you to go to the balance sheet and scroll down. And uh, this is the place where you can calculate the account receivables turnover. That is on row number 107. As we've done for the previous ratios, we'll be doing uh, calculating the ratios for all the five years. And uh, for that, first thing we will be needing is the sales numbers here. Okay, so for the sales numbers, they are inputted in the income statement. So they are here. So our first step is to link these up, okay, from the income statement. So I'm linking this sales numbers from here, that is C6. I've linked this first so that the calculation becomes fairly simple. You can directly take it from the income statement as well, but uh, Bringing it here, you know, makes things easier while you do the calculations. Here, I would like to make an assumption that the sales numbers, which we have picked it from the income statement, uh, let's assume that all of them are credit sales. I know this could be a tricky assumption, uh, but uh, for the sake of convenience, I have just taken it as all the sales which are reported on the income statement that is equal to credit sales, assuming that Colgate didn't do any cash sales altogether. For getting the credit sales numbers, you have to go to the annual report SEC filings and find out if the management has disclosed that kind of a number. I'm sure they might have done that. If not in the SEC filings, they might have uh, you know discussed that in the management calls for sure. Let's assume for now that all sales is equal to credit sales. Okay, so this is the first assumption. Now, a uh, Starting point of receivables turnover calculation uh, will be from December 2017 because we like to have the average receivables number. Average receivables of 2017 will be start and end divided by 2. Let us do that here. The receivables turnover, how do we define that as that is equal to credit sales divided by your average of the receivables, right? So I'll put an average formula here and I'll scroll up. Here are the receivables. So this is the start for the year and this is the end of the year. So I'll select these two numbers, okay? Start of the year, end of the year, and you need to close the brackets as well. This is how you calculate the receivables turnover ratio. This is credit sales. In this case, I've equated it to sales. And uh, second is, these two numbers are basically the start of receivables and end of receivables, the average of the two. So what we get is 10.69. Okay, so if I copy this formula and paste it across, we'll be able to get the account receivables turnover for a Colgate across all four years. So as you can see, account receivables turnovers have slightly improvised over a period of time. So it was 10.69 and now it is 12.18. Eight. Again, just to ask, how does this number stand? Whether it is good or bad? Obviously, you won't be able to answer this question right now because uh, you might have to compare it with peers, right? As we discussed, it has to be compared to the peers. So if the peer group has a higher turnover ratio, then this is a bad situation to be in. Maybe the company will have to catch up. So just to give an example, you know, a peer group is 
Procter and Gamble's. Procter and Gamble's has uh, an accounts receivables turnover ratio of around fifteen point five, I guess, up here, which is Procter and Gamble's. So if you know this data, obviously compared to Procter and Gamble's, Colgate is not doing good at all in terms of uh, calgary uh, converting its receivables into cash because procter and gambles is able to convert its receivables at a faster rate they're doing it 15.5 times during a year but colgate is uh, still catching up it's at 12.18 i hope you found this video to be useful please do like and share and if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section also, we come up with interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notification about our latest videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.